Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel Grace and Jobs. In today's video, I am going to walk you through the latest coding question from Accenture recruitment process along with key details of the coding round and some insider tips to help you crack the interview. Let's get started. Let's take a closer look at the Accenture coding round. The coding round is crucial part of Accenture recruitment process especially for freshers. This round is designed to test your problem solving skills, logical thinking and overall coding ability. If you want to secure a position at Accenture, you will need a solid understanding of data structures, algorithms and core programming concepts. Now let's dive into the pattern of the coding round. The Accenture coding questions have been of the following pattern given below. Two coding questions are given and you have 45 minutes to complete them. You can code in popular languages like C, C++, Java, Python or even .NET. Strong knowledge of fundamentals of programming has ensured that students are able to crack this section. To gain maximum opportunities of cracking this section, students must try to clear all of the possible test cases. Let's talk about the time constraints during Accenture coding round. You will have a limited time to answer the coding questions. This round isn't just about solving problems. It's also about how efficiently you can code under pressure. Usually you will get 45 minutes to solve two coding questions. Let's discuss how you can manage your time effectively during the test. Read carefully. Always make sure fully understand the question before you start writing any code. Plan. Think about your approach first. How will you solve the problem? This will save you time in the long run. Code. Write clear and simple code. Don't aim for perfection on the first try. Focus on getting a solution. Test. Once you have a solution, test your code to ensure it works correctly. Improve. If you have time, make your code better. With this time management tips, you will be able to stay focused and give yourself the best chance of clearing all the test cases. With this time management tips, you will be able to stay focused and give yourself the best chance of clearing all test cases. Now let's discuss marking scheme for Accenture coding round. You will be required to solve two coding questions in this round. Now to clear this round, you need to meet the minimum selection criteria. The first column shows the number of questions. You will always have two coding questions to complete. You need to get one complete output which means one of your solutions should pass all the test cases. The second question should have at least one partial output meaning it should pass some test cases even if not all. So if you can solve one problem fully and at least make progress on the other, you are in a good position to clear the coding round. This means even if you don't fully solve one question, showing progress and passing some test cases can still keep you in the running. So focus on getting at least one question fully right and don't give up on the second one even it feels difficulty. Remember every test case you pass count. Keep practicing and you will be well prepared for the coding round. Let's discuss some tips to ace Accenture coding round. Understand the problem before you code. Always take a moment to fully understand the problem statement Read it carefully, identify the input, output and edge cases before jumping into the coding. Misinterpreting the questions can lead to errors later on. Break down the problem. Divide the problem into smaller parts and solve them step by step. This approach not only simplifies complex problem but also makes your solution more structured and easy to debug. Practice code data structures and algorithms. Accenture often asks questions that test your knowledge of arrays, strings, linked list, and binary trace. Make sure you are comfortable with sorting algorithms like quicksort and merge sort, as well as concepts like recursion, dynamic programming, and greedy algorithms. Time management is key. Allocate time wisely to each problem. If you are stuck, don't waste too much time. Move to the next question and come back if possible. Let's discuss some tip. Prioritize solving easier problems first to maximize your score. Learn basic debugging techniques. Debugging can save your time during the coding round. Be prepared to identify common mistakes and correct them quickly. Tip: Know how to use debugging tools or simply add print statements to track where your code might be going wrong. Let's discuss problem statement. You are given a function. Let's look at this function declaration. Void max in array int array and int length. The function accepts an integer array of size length as its argument and print maximum element and its index on the standard output. The maximum element and index should be printed. The problem is simple. Let's solve this problem step by step. We will write a function that takes an integer array as input and print two things. 
the maximum element in array and index of this maximum element. Now before we dive into the solution, here are few key points to keep in mind. Array indexing starts from 0, which means the first element of array is at index 0, the second element is at index 1 and so on. And second thing, there is only one maximum element in the array. You can assume that there is only one maximum element in the array and our output should be clean. No extra messages or no greetings should be printed. Just the maximum value and its index on two separate lines. Let me explain this with an example. We are working with this array of numbers. Let's take a look at this array of numbers. So our goal is to find largest number in the array and figure out the position or index of that number. So we can observe that from the given set of elements, the largest element in this array is 86 and its index number is 9. So the output will look like this. 86 which represents largest number in the given array and 4 represents index of that number. Finally, here is another example to clarify. Let's take a look at this array of numbers. So from the given set of arrays, we can observe that largest number is 144 and its position in the array is 3 because 144 is at 4th position and we start counting index from 0. Simple right? Let's now write the code to solve this step by step. Now let's implement the solution in Python. I will guide you through the entire process so don't worry if you are a beginner. We will walk through the python solution to find the maximum element in array and its index. We will go step by step to understand how the code works and see it in action. First we will write a function that goes through the list and finds the largest number along with this index. So first we define a function called find max number which accepts one argument that is list. So which is the list of numbers. So inside the function we initialize two variables max number which is set to the first element of the list and coming to max index which is set to 0 assuming the first element is the maximum initially. Next we loop through the list starting from index 1. So for each element we check if it is greater than current max number then we update max number to this new value and set max index to current index. Finally the function returns the maximum number and its index as a tuple. Now let's look at how we handle the input. Next, we prompt the user to enter a series of numbers separated by spaces. So we use the input function to take input as string. Then we split the string into a list of values using split method and convert each them into an integer using map. The result is stored in variable numbers. Once we have finished checking all the elements, we return the maximum number that is max num and its index that is max index from the function. Finally, we print the result as required. First, we print the maximum number. On the next line, we print its index. So it's simple and efficient and meets the requirement of the problem. Let's test the code. I will input the numbers 23, 45, 13, 71, 86. As you can see, the output is 86 and 4. So the maximum number is 86 and its index is 4. Perfect. So this confirms that the function correctly identifies the maximum element and its index. And that's how you solve the problem of finding maximum element and its index in Python. Now we are going to solve a classic string manipulation problem using Python. That is reversing the order of a words in a sentence. Let's discuss the problem statement. You are given a single line of text with words separated by spaces. Your task is to reverse the order of the words and print the result. For example, for instance, if input is hello word, so the output should be word hello. Notice that the order of words changes but the words themselves remain intact. Simple enough, right? Now let's see how we can solve this step by step. Before we start, let me tell you how we will approach this. Read the input string and break it into individual words and then reverse the order of these words and combine them back into a single string and print the result. Let's discuss in detail. To solve this problem, we will follow these steps in Python. First step, split the sentence into words. So we will use Python split method to break the sentence into a list of words. After that, we have to reverse the list of words. So we will reverse the order of the words in the list using Python slicing feature. And then 
join the reverse words back into a sentence so finally we will combine the reverse list into a single string using join method with this plan in mind let's start coding now we will write the code step by step and explain each part so we will use python because it's simple and efficient for such task so we'll start by taking the input string from the user so here is the first line of code input string equals to input so this asks the user to enter a string and stores in variable input string for example if you type hello world it will store hello world simple right let's move on next we need to break the sentence into individual words so we'll use python split function for this the split function breaks the input into a list of words based on spaces for example if the input is hello world so this will create a list now we reverse the list of words using slicing the slicing takes the list and reverse it if the original list is hello world this will create a new list world hello so python makes this superb simple finally we combine the reverse words into a single string using join function the join function merges all the words in a list into a single string separated by spaces so world hello becomes world hello lastly let's print the reverse string to see the result this will display the final output on the screen let's start with an easy example hello world so the expected result is world hello let's run the code and check the output so the program splits the input into words reverse their order and joins them back together so the output is world hello as you can see the words are reversed in order as expected now let's discuss next problem statement write a function that takes a list of integers and returns a sum of all even numbers in the list let's look at the key points the list will contain between 1 and 1000 integers and function must return the sum of even numbers if there are no even numbers the sum should be zero let's consider input a list of integers for example 1 to 6 so the output the sum of even numbers in the list in this case the output will be 12 because the even numbers are 2 4 6 and the sum is 2 plus 4 plus 6 equals to 12 let's implement the solution in python first we define a function name sum of even numbers so that takes one parameter that is numbers so which is a list of integers then initialize a variable to store the sum so we initialize even sum equals to 0 so we start by initializing a variable even sum to 0 so this will hold the total sum of even numbers then we use a for loop to go through each number in the input list then the condition number divided by 2 equals to equals to 0 it checks if the number is divisible by 2 if the remainder is 0 so it's an even number if the number is even we add it to even sum so this step accumulates the sum of all even numbers so after processing all the numbers the final value of even sum is written let's see the code in action with this example so input we start with the input list 1 to 6 so first number is 1 so it is odd so we skip it second number is 2 it is even so we add it to the sum the running sum is now 2 coming to third number it is odd so we skip it fourth number is 4 four, so it is even so we add it to the sum the running sum is now 6 coming to fifth element it is odd so we skip coming to sixth element it is even so we add it to the sum now the final sum is now 12 so the function prints the result 12 which is the sum of 2 plus 4 plus 6 that's the total sum of all even numbers in the list as you can this function successfully identifies the even numbers in the list and add them up to the given correct sum this is a simple yet powerful way of using loops and conditional statements in python let's discuss another problem statement arun is a bus conductor his ticket machine is printing numbers in reverse order due to some technical glitch as a programmer on the bus you are asked to help him by creating a program to displace the number correctly so in this problem we need to create a program that takes an integer input and reverses its digit and displays the correct order however since the ticket machine is printing numbers in reverse order we have to reverse the digit back to the correct order let's discuss an example if the input is 320 
so the output should be 23. Notice how the trailing zero disappears when the number is reversed. Another example, if the input is 231, the output should be 132. So our program should work for any number when Arun enters. Let's discuss some steps to solve this problem. The input will be an integer and we need to read the input from the user. Then reversing the digit. So the code task is to reverse the digit of the number. A simple way to reverse the digit is by converting the number into a string, reversing that a string and then converting it back into an integer. Then if the number ends with 0, the reverse number should not have leading zeros. For example, if input is 320, the reverse number should be 23, ignoring leading zeros. Now let's move to the code editor and implement this step by step. So I will be using python. First we define a function called reverse number. So which takes one parameter that is n. So n is expected to be an integer, example like 320, 231. Next converting the number to a string. So the first operation inside the function is string of n. So which converts the number n into a string. Then this step is important because string can be manipulated but while integer cannot be manipulated. For example, if n equals to 320, then string of n becomes 320. This is python slicing syntax and it's a powerful feature to manipulate sequence like string, list or tuples. Next to minus 1 means start from the end of the string and moves backward that is step minus 1 until the beginning. For example, 320 results in 0 to 3. For example, 231 slicing results in 132. Then after reversing, we convert the string back to an integer using int function. So this step is crucial because it removes leading zeros automatically. Example, 0 to 3 becomes 23, so leading zero is dropped. Finally, the reverse number is written as the output of the function. Example, if the input was 320, the output will be 23. Let's discuss other example. If the input was 231, the output will be 132. And here the other result. So let's run this and here are the result for example 320 the output would be 23 and for 231 the output is 132. So our function works perfectly. And that's all for today's video on latest technical Accenture questions. I hope you found these questions and their explanation helpful in your preparation. If you have any specific topics or questions you had like me to cover, let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Looking for more resources, check out my channel for videos on technical, HR and coding round preparation, especially designed for freshers. And you will also find links to additional content in description below. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck with your Accenture interview journey. Stay confident, stay prepared and you are sure to succeed. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and happy learning.